And now, from Music City, USA, here's your Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> Don't forget me, little darling, while I'm growing old and gray. Just a little thought before I'm going far away. I'll be waiting on the hillside where the wild red roses grow. On the sunny side of the mountains where the rippling waters flow. Yes, sirree, friends, we've got another wagon load of music and fun to send your way from the old Opry House tonight. Some of your favorite stars are on hand to entertain you, including uh, Hawkshaw, Shorty Hawkins, the Lumen Brothers, Stonewall Jackson, the Carter family, the Fruit Jar Drinkers, and Jerry Hanlon. So you settle back in your old rocking chair or your easy chair if it don't rock, and get ready to enjoy yourself as we swing into the show with Hawkshaw Hawkins. <laughs> Twenty mile at sea, the lights on land are calling me. Give a six months pay for a little hero. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Thursday, the fifth day of March, and it was twenty-four years ago today that a plane crash took the lives of three legends in country music: Hawkshaw Hawkins, whom we opened with, Patsy Cline, and Cowboy Copas. And I've got a very special guest with me this morning here in the studio. This gentleman was personally acquainted with all three artists, and that's Charlie Peanut Faircloth. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Earl. Good morning, everyone. One other name you left out there. Randy Hughes. Randy Hughes. Right. He was the pilot of the plane. What were you doing that uh, day? You remember what you were doing on the field? Well... Oh, well, let me see. How am I supposed to say, well, uh -huh. who all remembers? <laughs> uh, I guess I was working, let me see, what year was it? 63. Uh, 63. You were down at WAPO. Yeah, that's right. I was down at WAPO. Because I listened to you that morning. Yeah. Well, I remember I on the way to school, we had you tuned in. Well, I was working, and uh, between programs, I was probably fishing. Yeah. And uh, you got the news. What time of day did word come? Do you remember? I don't. Uh, Mid-morning, maybe? Uh, let me see. I don't remember just exactly. I hadn't even thought about it. Uh, probably late in the afternoon because, uh, yes, that's right. It was in the morning because the crash happened at night. Uh-huh. I know that we were in school, and we had a radio, uh, we had a radio at, lunch, at the lunch hour. And we were listening to WFLI, and Dr. Dale, Dale Anthony, was uh -huh. on duty, and uh, the word came across. We were listening to them, I believe, at the lunch hour, about 11.30 or so, and um, we heard that they had been killed, and they started playing the songs of these three great artists. Yeah, uh, that's right, because it happened. They had been out, I believe, either Oklahoma or Kansas, somewhere out there, and had done a show, a benefit show, by the way, and was coming back. And uh, Randy <laughs> thought he was he he was a, a good pilot, but uh, the weather seemed to be bad always around Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to Nashville has claimed quite a few lives. Yeah, you knew all three of them, or had met all three of them. Oh yeah, oh yes. Uh, uh, Patsy at uh, one time when I was here in Chattanooga, uh, she came down on a show. They had what they call a big package show. At Hawkshaw and uh, Gene Shepard, his wife, and uh, Jimmy Dickens and Patsy, and uh, I'm, well, had our band, the group that I had. Mm hmm. Dixie, usually, Dixieland Drifters. Uh, no, no, no. It was the Hot Roasted Hillbillies. Hot Roasted, oh, that was before the Dixieland Drifters. No, after. after. Uh, well, well, before and after. Oh, okay. Anyhow, uh, uh, Dickens' band was uh, furnishing. The background for all of the stars. Uh huh. Hawkshaw didn't have and uh, Gene didn't have any trouble with them, but the boys that played for Dickens, they didn't know Patsy's songs, and we'd come out and did our part of the show. We opened the program, really. and Charlie Chambers, you know, was playing the guitar with me then. Old chunky, uh huh. And uh, Patsy was a little bit kind of 
upset about the way they didn't know her songs and sort of messed up her show. And they had a intermission and they was going to come back and do a second show. She come back and ask, would it be if our band would back her up on her second show? And I says, why, sure. When I told Charlie Chambers that, I I, I thought the boy was going to climb the wall. <laughs> was she a persnickety person? Uh, Patsy Klein? Well, now, what is the word persnickety? Stuck up? Well, what? let me see. I could give you an example. Okay. Uh, my main uh, uh, relation with her is you know how a lot of people like to slip, slip up behind you mm -hmm. and put their hands over your eyes and say, guess who? Mm -hmm. She liked to slip up behind me and kiss me right in the ear. Well, that's not persnickety. Well, uh, that, would that, would that uh, answer your question? So she was... Uh, she was about the most unpersnickety person I believe I've ever met. Uh-huh. How did she get started? Godfrey? Mm, that, uh, yeah, I guess so, yes. She was on Godfrey's... Uh, talent show and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, won that thing and so uh, well let's see did she win or come in second place now you're the authority I I'm not I'm not an authority uh, my you know, there's one uh, three different I've used this many times everybody knows it but there's three definite ways you can tell when you're getting old the first one is you start losing your memory and I don't remember the other two yeah I got that well, according to my encyclopedia, her first break came when Wally Fowler of the Grand Ole Opry signed her up. Mm -hmm. And then from there, she went to win, this says, Arthur Godfrey's talent scout show in early 57, which uh, led to a recording contract with Decca. And uh, her first hit was in February of 57. That was Walking After Midnight. More than a year later, in May 61, she had her next pop hit, I Fall to Pieces, and a month later, she was involved in the auto crash in Madison, and uh, she sustained a fractured hip and head injuries. I didn't know that. Yeah, she... And then on the March the 5th, 1963, she was returning from Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, they had they'd uh, staged a benefit show with Cactus Jack Call. And the plane uh, being piloted by Hughes, as you said, had gassed up at 6 p.m. Uh, that evening in Dyersburg and was on its last hop to Nashville. Uh, I remembered it was at night because mm -hmm. they, uh, and I remembered it. See, I remembered part of it that they were doing a benefit show. One thing I remember about Randy Hughes, uh, when I was in Augusta before I came to Chattanooga, he had gotten uh, into the promoting ad advanced man. He was an advanced man. I believe uh, Norm Riley was bringing a bunch of them to the auditorium there in Augusta. Mm -hmm. And Randy, he would come down into town about, oh, three weeks ahead of time of the show and set up advertising on the radio and newspapers and all. So uh, he came in, and we had a, a lady that was uh, a sales. She just got into sales. She had been working as a salesperson for the radio station. Her name was Eileen Stubb. You might remember the name. She was at one time the uh, state golfing champion, amateur champion of Georgia. But she had quit the station and started her own little advertising agency. So I went to uh, told Randy, I says, I can save you a lot of time having to go around to all of these uh, uh, stations and uh, place an advertisement. And you just go over to Eileen, her office right across the street, so she can go around and handle it all for you. It won't cost you a bit more, and she can do it more effectively. So he, that would save him a couple of days, you see. So he uh, thanked me, and he went on over. He had checked into the hotel, and he was supposed to, the next morning, we were supposed to go fishing. And I went up to get him, to take him up to Clark Hill Dam to go fishing, and he didn't show up. So I went ahead and went fishing, and... Uh, I figured he'd maybe got called and went back to Nashville. Well, the, uh, the next day, I went by to the hotel to check again. He was up in the hotel. He was sick. He had come down with the mumps, and he had to stay there two weeks in that hotel. And the, I guess the promoter had to pay his bill. But he had, uh, that, And that wasn't too long before they got killed. But uh, he had to stay in Augusta two weeks with the mumps. One of your favorite Patsy Klein songs is the one we're going to play next. All right. Faded Love. Why, why do you like that? 
Well, I always liked the song. See, I was always a big Bob Wills fan and a Patsy Cline, too. But uh, Patsy was the first one that I ever heard that sang the verse and the chorus both in the same key. See, Bob, uh, they'd sing, say, the, the verse in the key of A, and then they'd sing the chorus in the key of D. She sang the whole thing in one key. Mm-hmm. And that's why I started saying that's why I have to go up and do a little yodeling on it. <laughs> she sings it all in the same voice. Then. WDOD remembering the late Patsy Cline, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Cowboy Copas. Before the, uh, the break, you and I were talking about uh, Patsy Cline and the emotion in her voice in, in that song. You can feel it. She was an emotional person even when she weren't singing. She was very emotional. A person could relate to her a story about someone being sick or maybe a death or something, and she shared that emotion oh, along with that person. Yeah, she was very emotional. Cried even at a ball game. Is that right? By the way, uh, you know, the, the thing they're advertising, I don't know whether I mentioned this or not, but television, uh, they have a thing they're selling Red Sylvine's records mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And the guy they show on there, Charlie Dick, mm-hmm. a record producer, that was her uh, Patsy's husband. I didn't know that. Yeah, that was uh, they show Char- him. Charlie Dick. Charlie Dick, that was Patsy's husband. Now he was president of Starday or is president of Starday Records, right? Um, now I think so. I believe. Or Gusto. Not, Gusto, it yeah. is. Yeah, that was Starday. They changed it. Uh, Don Pierce was the one that called it mm-hmm. Starday, and uh, I've done quite a bit of business with them myself. My guest this morning, Charlie Peanut Faircloth. We're remembering Patsy Cline, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Cowboy Copas. Tell me a little bit about Cope. I don't know too awful much about Coke. I knew him more, more or less, I guess, backstage. Uh, uh, and, uh, his, his family, his son Mike, works has worked. I've worked with him quite a bit. He's uh, one of the busiest drummers over around Nashville. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, as far as anything personal about him, I knew his, uh, just uh, the family just met him on shows when he'd come into what town. What type of person was he? Very uh, likable person. And he just, uh, well, most all of the older stars like that, and well, most of them now are just down-to-earth people. Coke mm-hmm. was very down-to-earth. Uh, he was very quiet. You know, he was, I guess, probably at least about half Indian. Oh, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, he, he was an Indian and... And uh, Indians usually are kind of quiet. Yeah. Of course, me, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the loud ones. <laughs> he had his, uh, he had his heyday with a record called Alabama, didn't he? Uh, yes, I guess that was uh, well. They that signed, sealed, and delivered. I guess was probably his biggest seller. Mm-hmm. Really, the one that uh, I remember him mostly by. The, uh, the Encyclopedia of Music here says that that Alabama was a number one song for him and was on the charts for 34 weeks. Now that. That was a little bit unusual for a country record in the 50s, wasn't it? No, uh-huh. but uh, the one that rem- uh, really he was back uh, in his heyday, the one that I remember that he was most famous for was the Filipino Baby. That's yeah. the one that broke. In other words, that was his first big hit. Now, that who I had that first, him or Ernest Hub? Oh, uh, Cope had it. Cope was had So it. that was Cope's song. Yeah. We picked out another one to play next. Well, that doesn't matter, but you was... Uh, <laughs> We're going to try to get get as many of them on today as we possibly can, but this is the one you remember, Sunny Tennessee. And I wonder how I got this tune. I don't know. I guess uh, sort of a regional type song. Well, uh, so, so is uh, Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy. <laughs> Ooh, but they know it in uh, Singapore. Oh, yes. Well, Here's the late Cowboy Copas. Sunny Tennessee, Cowboy Copas. That's a good peppy song. Huh? Oh, yes. He, he was good at the peppy ones. Uh, Cope, uh, before he went to the Opry, he traveled around with a couple of different fiddle players, and they'd go to all these fiddling conventions, 
and Cope would just play rhythm guitar. He was most or less a, a fiddle player's guitar player. <laughs> A fiddle player's guitar, guitar player. player. Yeah, he, he could play the old hoedown. You know, he played a good, solid rhythm. He was one of the few uh, country singers, as we, as we usually call them, that used a thumb pick. Usually, you think of thumb pick players as bluegrass pickers, but he, mm -hmm. he used a thumb pick and framed that guitar with his hand. He had a sort of an unusual style of playing the guitar. Yeah. It's 10.30. This is WDOD Chattanooga. We're saluting Patsy Cline, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and uh, Cowboy Copas today. And my friend uh, Charlie Peanut Faircloth is here. We'll open up the telephone lines now. If you've got a question or maybe you have a favorite song or some particular uh, thing that you wanted to share with us, give us a call. Good morning. This is WDOD. Hey, Earl. Yes, sir. I believe I'll have to disagree with uh, on that uh, Filipino baby tic tac uh, T. Texas Tyler came out with that in 1946. That's right. That's right. I uh, I had forgotten about old T. Texas Tyler. Hey, uh, nothing. Please, please, please stop the world and let me off. Stop the world and let me off. That's her, uh, that was our uh, early record. Okay. If we've got that, we sure will. Well, I got the album. Okay. Thanks for calling. WDOD. This is Earl. Hey, Earl. Yes, sir. This is Dickie. Yeah, Dickie Matthews. Yeah. How in the world are you doing? I do good. I just listened to you. You're talking about how Patsy Klein got her start. I might can fill you in a little bit on it. Okay. She, before that she went to the Godfrey show, she worked on the Jimmy Dean uh, TV show that was televised out of Washington, D.C. Uh, this was before, like, 56, 57, along in there. And I was on that show, and this was before she went to Godfrey show. You mean you worked the Jimmy Dean show? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yes, oh. sure did. Yeah, I worked with, uh, remember that album you were showing me a while ago about the gospel singers? Uh-huh. That's where I met Dickie, yeah. way back with some of those big famous quartets. Is that right? Now, who were you playing for, Dickie? I was playing with a, with a gospel group, and we was on the show. We had a show in the, in the afternoon, about 4.30 every day. I'd do them live. And, and th this this was TV? Yeah. Is that right? It was MAL TV in Washington. And then about 6 o'clock, Jimmy's show came on, and of course we were on it. And then Saturday night, they had a big uh, jamboree show up. That was televised up in the east. I don't know. It was on the network, seven or eight stations. Now, I did not see the movie Sweet Dreams, but some people told me that uh, that the movie is a little raw. I didn't see it. Either. Did you see it? No, I didn't. Charlie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it... Uh, was it pretty true to form the way you knew it? I didn't. I didn't get to see it. She she was just a little bit. She could uh, uh, sailors would be feel at home with her and just carrying on a conversation. Uh huh. She could talk pretty rough. But despite the the rough talk, she was still down to earth. Oh yeah, she was a beautiful person. Yeah. What else, Dickie? Well, I was going to tell you, Jimmy was on that show, and uh, this was before he went on ABC. Uh, Network every day, you know. Uh huh. This was before then, and on the show, Billy Grammer was there. Yeah, George. he was. He was a guitar player for. Jim. Yeah, uh, Buck. Buck Ryan was his fiddler. Uh huh. And uh, Billy was there. Buck and uh, George Hamilton the fourth. And Jan Howard was there about the time I left. That was before she went to Nashville. So Jan Howard uh, started singing as early as the mid fifties, huh? Yeah. Her birthday's coming up. Uh, well, I think it's the 13th, Friday the 13th. That's Jan Howard's birthday. Mm -hmm. Don't know how old she is. Yeah. I wonder if Harlan's going to uh, celebrate that one like he does his. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dickie, it's good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm enjoying the show. Okay, thank you. All right. This supposedly is uh, the first song that Patsy Cline uh, recorded that really went big, Walking After Midnight. Is that is that the one you remember as being her first one? I never did keep records of <laughs> uh, no, of anything like that, Earl. I, I just always played what came to mind. <laughs> yeah. I never was much but, a... Do you remember walking? Oh, I remember the song, yes. But as far as keeping anything, uh, any records of any chronology, I never was one for that. What was it that uh, that Patsy Cline, what characteristic did Patsy Cline have that Godfrey liked? Did you, did you ever hear anybody say? Uh... Well, I, I wouldn't know, but I imagine it would be the same thing that everyone else. Uh, uh, she had such a, a glowing look about her. 
and a glowing personality. She just was, she was what you'd call almost iridescent. Mm hmm. Why, uh, why did she make it so big in country when really her voice is more of a pop voice? Mm, well, she was a country girl. She was a country girl, country to the heart. But I can play you some stuff here uh, that, uh, that in, in the days of, of M.O.R., of Sinatra, and Jerry Vale, and Bennett, and people like that, she fit right in. Nobody oh, yes. knows the difference. Well, Chet Atkins, he can play uh, right along with Segovia, but he's still country. <laughs> you can take the girl out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the girl, Earl. We're uh, remembering three of the greatest country music singers that ever lived today. Patsy Cline, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Cowboy Copas. And in the studio with me, my friend Charlie Peanut Faircloth. Now, this lady on the telephone with us, Peanut, is a die-hard in the wool Patsy Cline fan. There's and a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of them. What do you remember, ma'am, about Patsy Cline? Oh, well, just about everything she done and said. I, I like Pat, you know. And with all, you've heard all those stories and this and that of, of how rough she was. She really wasn't that hard. I mean, she had to be in the business that she was in because there was so, you know, it was a man's world then. And she just wouldn't let any of the men run over or anyone run over. And, you know, with all her harshness and all that and, and her talk and everything, she had a heart of gold. You could tell her that you liked her earrings and she'd take them off and give them to you. There you go. Uh, you know, and Pat was just a marvelous person. Now, back before the days of Jimmy Dean, uh, you were telling me just a minute ago, didn't she play uh, with somebody's band? Bill Peer. Bill who? Bill Peer. Bill Peer. Now, uh -huh. I don't... What, what was... Was he a big band leader? No, uh, he was country music, too. Uh, I don't remember him. Did, well... That's back a few years. Well, that was in, in <laughs> the late 40s, early 50s, and now, uh... She was with Bill's band when she recorded Walking After Midnight, uh -huh. and that was in 56, if I recall. Uh, and now she had been to California and had a, a contract out there, and, and the contract that they had, or uh, that Owen bought, uh, you know, uh, do you recall the name McCall, Bill McCall? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he he had her own label out in California, and she had recorded several songs before Walking After Midnight came out. Now, I was saying just a few minutes ago that Patsy Cline would have made a good pop singer, and here's a case in point. On one of her albums, Love Letters in the Sand. I mean, there's Pat Boone's hit. Well, she didn't want to be a pop singer. She wanted to be a country singer. Why did she record Love Letters in the Sand? Just because it was a good song? It was a good song, but you can take a good song and make anything out of it. If a good song is good, it can go pop, rock, or country, or bluegrass. Uh, Love Letters in the Sand was a bluegrass uh -huh. hit first, Earl. Yeah. Oh. Mac Wiseman recorded that uh, before Pat Boone. Well, Love Letters and Footprints in the Sand, that became... A so I have song. egg on my face again. Oh, well, now, here's a song that wasn't a country song before. Bill Bailey, Won't You Please Come Home? Was that country? That, uh, when it first <laughs> came out, it would be considered, I guess, nowadays, kind of like a folk song. What do you think, Choo Choo? Uh, well, Patsy could do, you know, uh, you don't limit yourself. Once you, uh, anyone in music... Once you learn Wildwood Flower, then you go on from there, see? That's why most uh, bands, when they go out and play, they don't like to play Wildwood Flower. See? They feel like they're trying to put them back to the beginning. Okay, now, you don't get any more big bandish than does your heart beat for me. That's on her album, A Portrait of Patsy Cline. Okay, but a lot of Pat songs goes back to the time when music really was not categorized that much. That's right. It, it, back in the 40s, uh, Bob Wills, Spade Cooley. They were just bands. You know, they weren't considered country bands or swing bands or whatever. They were just considered a band. Now, Choo Choo used to do pop shows before you started being a disc jo jockey as a country announcer, right? You did mm -hmm. some pop shows? I, I was doing both. I was doing both at the same time. How did the pop audience accept Patsy? Very, uh, well, uh, I don't know about the sales because I wouldn't know about that. Uh, 
uh, a Tennessee Ernie Ford. See, he was he's still he's always been regarded as pop and country. Was she the Barbara Mandrell of the fifties? I would say so. Yeah. You agree, ma'am? Well, uh, Barbara Mandrell, you got to consider that there was no such thing as rock then. Yeah. You know. Pop. Barbara Mandrell is it goes more into the rock air than the pop air. No, um, she's more cute than anything else. <laughs> well, you see, we all can't be like that, though. So we we just try to keep it in music. Well, she's cute enough. <laughs> Let let's 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 give our listeners a sampling of what I mean by Patsy Cline singing pop music. And uh, who had the who had the first hit on Heartaches? What was the man that whistled? Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Carol, you know uh, I... I know, but I can't think of it. Uh, he went, Heartaches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold me. Ted Weems. Ted Weems. Ted there Weems. you go. Okay. This is Patsy Cline's uh, version of Heartaches. Thanks for calling. Uh -huh. See you later. Bye-bye. Keep waiting for the whistling, <laughs> but there wasn't any whistling. Now that's good. Yeah. Well, Earl, you're the perfect example of why Patsy could uh, do such stuff like that. So you, you're as probably one of the biggest bluegrass fans in town. You like pop music, gospel, jazz, but not but, junk. No, anything good. I'm, I'm the same way. If it's good, no matter what kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh, music. Uh, you know, if you're dining. You got to have good music to accompany good food, right? Bill Monroe. Well, no, but uh, my example is that uh, I don't. I like uh, cornbread and butter beans and turnips just as good as anyone. But I wouldn't like them uh, three three meals a day, every day in the week. So I'm the same way with my food. I like filet mignon and and uh, strawberry pie and, and all kind of different things. Guacamole. Of course, you know what I found out. One of the things I can't eat anymore is guacamole. You can't eat guacamole. No, that's not on my diet anymore. What is guacamole? You don't know what guacamole is? Uh-uh. Uh, uh, well, that's the... Can you buy that Earl Roden? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Dale Metter, we did a Christmas program. We do one every year for some art group here in town. And the the these artists, they all bring a covered dish... And I don't know which one it is, but one of them brings always brings a big dish of guacamole, and I always get into that first. Mm. Beautiful, best I ever ate. Charlie Peanut Faircloth and Earl here, and uh, we're talking about uh, three greats in country music. Good morning, WDOD. Hey Earl, it's you, old me, buddy. Tom Adkins. <laughs> I know Tom Adkins. I'm glad you got that choo choo on the. Turntable with you this morning. He's a great one, isn't he? Uh, yeah, the last I heard from him, he was kind of penny. Is he, does he look like he's recovered or ever will? Do it, Do you look like you recovered? Uh, uh, yes, I, I'm semi-recovered. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're up for that, Peanut. I'm glad to hear you, buddy. Thank you, Tom. Uh, listen, uh, if you've got it handy there, uh, there's two songs that comes to mind in connection with Peanut. And Hawkshaw Hawkins, of course. I'll sail my ship alone. Have you got that in around there? Anyway? That's by Patsy, isn't it? Yeah, she did that, and uh, it was Moon Mulligan, not Hawkshaw. I mean, why, well, yes, yes. What am I thinking about? Okay. The same record company. The Hawks Pete Manor player. Yeah, Haw Hawkshaw and uh, Moon were both with King Records. And uh, then there's the Charterbacker song. We haven't heard it yet, or I haven't. I've got I, to play that. I think that's been banned, hasn't it? <laughs> been banned. I'll tell you something that did come to me as news though this morning. I didn't. I, I have run into Dickie Matthews a few times. I don't know whether he remembers me or not, but I think I've got an album that he and I were uh, co-workers on. What's the name of it? It's one that we cut. I believe he played the organ on one that I played electric bass on uh, gospel album with the Madaris family back about. Is that right? Well, that's that's something you'll want to keep. Well, I guess I've got one of the few copies that's in existence around here. And uh, I've got it stored away. Uh, it doesn't play much. But, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get played much, but I, I'm keeping it purposely for just a uh, souvenir, more or less. I would, too. And, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite Cowboy Copas tune? I thought everything Coke did was good. 
I agree. Thanks for calling, Tom. Good to hear you, buddy, and, and uh, spend one of Goobers after a while when you get a chance. All right. Good to hear you, Pino. Thank you, Tom. Bye-bye. WDOD, good morning. Hey, Earl. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is Ruby Richardson. Thank Hi. you so much for calling my friend in uh, New Jersey yesterday. Yeah, we called New Jersey yesterday, Pino. Well, did you know yet tomorrow is her birthday? Well, and I... And I am so thankful that you called yesterday because she called me last night. Uh-huh. And she said, uh, oh, she was so thrilled, she didn't know what to do. And she said if it had been Friday, she would have had to been at the core working. Oh. And I am so thankful that it was yesterday, and I do appreciate you. What is your favorite Patsy Klein song? Oh, uh, Lord, right off the top of my head, I, I loved them all. I can't have them. I loved them all. I think that's probably one of my <laughs> favorites, too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved all of them. I can't say, say one right off, but yeah. I loved all of them. <laughs> we appreciate you listening. Okay, thanks a lot, Earl. Bye-bye. Bye. Good morning, WDOD. Yes. Uh, is this Earl? Yes, sir. Uh, then I'd like to know who played the steel guitar on that Patsy Cline album, the song there, Walking After Midnight. All right, Choo Choo, who played the steel? I would have no idea. I'd have to hear it. Uh, some of the steel players, I can, uh, I think Jerry Bird played a lot of, on a lot of her albums, but if I heard the steel playing, I might recognize well, it. Well, I thought it was Jerry Bird. He was always my favorite. Well, let's let's see. Let, let I've got it right here. Let's play the first chord there. Oh, that's Don Helms. It is. That's Don yeah. Helms. Don Helms of the Wilburn Brothers show. Yeah, I, I would I would know it too. Well, of course I know it since Peanut told us. <laughs> yeah. They both sound a lot alike. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'll disagree with you there. <laughs> There's a lot of differences. I can tell the difference between Jerry Bird and Don oh, yeah. Helms. Yeah, yeah. At the mash of a foot pedal. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I didn't know. I, 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 Jerry Bird was always my favorite anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's one of my favorites. What's your favorite uh, Cowboy Copas tune? Well, I like Cowboy Copas on several of them. And, uh, so I don't really have a favorite. I just like the Cowboy Copas real well. How about Sign, Sealed, and Delivered? Oh, that's my favorite. Okay, you gonna play that one? Right now. Thank you. Sign, sealed, and delivered. Who's playing steel on that? That was uh, Roy Wiggins, I believe. I have a definite memory about that song. That came out, I believe, along about in 45 or 46, just not long before I got into radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I knew it was going to be a hit I had heard it, and I knew the chorus of it. And I was playing with a band at a place called Crawford's, Crawford's Restaurant on Broadway down in Macon, Georgia. And a man came up to me and says, You know that sign sealed and delivered? And I says, No, sir, I don't. I know the chorus of it. So we'll sing it, and I'll give you a dollar. So I says, Well, I'll... <laughs> I got up and sang the chorus, and I made up some verses for it. I'd never heard this song all the way through. You know, I'd never learned it. And uh, I sang it, and... In a little while, a guy came up with another dollar to sing that song again. <laughs> I sang that song 17 times in one night for that man. <laughs> you made $17? <laughs> and I had $17 uh, tips. You know, he gave me a dollar every time I would sing it. I never did know anything but just the chorus of it. Cope had uh, two go-arounds on that. What, the mid-40s? And then they re-released it back in uh, 1961 mm -hmm. and had another go-around. Oh, yes. So uh, it's still a good song. Oh yeah, yeah. Good that's, song. That, that good songs last forever. That's Cope's song exclusive, right? Like, just like the reindeer boogie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I got that. I know it. I heard you. Play I it. got that, and I found the record Reindeer Boogie down at the library. I was down there one day, and there was the Christmas with Hank Snow album. Where at, at the, public the Chattanooga library? Public Library. Now I know where I can get me a copy of it. Yes, I don't even sir. have a copy of it. And I've got a library card if you you know if you need to go check it out. I, I, my wife has one. Out. We are remembering this morning Patsy Cline, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Cowboy Copas, who all three of them, along with Randy Hughes, died in a plane crash on this date, 1963. And we'll be back after the news. My special guest, Charlie Peanut Faircloth. There's one of his songs I was that uh, had a, uh, an unusual sound. I was trying to think of it. Oh, was it Big Blue Diamonds or something like that? I don't know. I forget uh, the one that he used to sing, and I used to play it quite often on the radio.
Well, I want to know who's doing the steel guitar on this song when you hear it. All right. I don't apologize for loving you. I don't apologize for loving you. Written by Burns. You know who Burns is? No, I, they, they never would give the discography on the writers. <laughs> Tell me something interesting about the Hawkshaw. Uh, one thing that always stands out that wasn't exactly a Hawkshaw, uh, well, it had to do with his uh, height and size. He was about six foot seven. It always was funny about, the, well, you know, great big guys like the little bitty girls, and little bitty girls like great big guys, I guess, or difference. And, and yeah, you know, as, as big as he was, and it's all that coat he wore, you know, the coat with the big hawk on the back of it. And uh, I was over at the Grand Ole Opry one Saturday night backstage, and uh, Marty Robbins was on stage. And they always, the, the, all the musicians, they just loved to break Ma Marty up. And Don Slayman, remember him? Uh-huh. He's a little, little bitty fellow. He was a fiddle player, I believe. I believe he played for Hawkshaw. Yeah, he did. And uh, and Hawk, you know, had the great big, about, I guess one of the biggest cowboy hat I've ever seen. Yeah. And that big coat. And so Don Slayman, no, Don was playing with Marty. That's right. He was playing with Marty. He went backstage and put on Hawk's coat and his hat. And the coat hung down almost to the floor. They had to roll the sleeves up, and he, he was supposed to come out and, and take a play a part in the song that Marty was singing. Mm-hmm. Marty would sing, and then Don was supposed to come up and play a little a little turnaround in the center of it. So, And he was standing sort of behind Marty, so Marty couldn't see him. Then when it comes Don's time to step up, he steps up the microphone wearing Hawkshaw Hawkins hat and coat. Needless to say, Marty never did finish the song. Is that right? The audience and everybody just fell out. It just broke the show up. It's Don Slayman wearing Hawkshaw Hawkins hat and coat. It'd be uh, like a... A baby rabbit under a collared leaf. <laughs> I remember you used to go over to Nashville and uh, around DJ convention time, and you'd make tapes and send them back, and they would play them. Uh -huh. And if I'm not mistaken, and uh, you were interviewing Hawkshaw one time, and the two of you had exchanged roles, and uh, he was talking about your size, and you were talking about his size. Uh -huh. okay. And he was uh, he he was he was over ribbing you. Yeah. He's asking you how you got your name and everything. Yeah. His nickname was Shorty, too. Was uh, No, I, 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 everybody called him Hawk. Hawk? Yes, Hawk's all I ever heard. Yeah, okay. They probably called Jeannie <laughs> Shorty. Yeah, okay. That, okay. Jeannie, because she now, was a little bitty thing. Hawkshaw was first married to who? Gene mm, Shepard? Uh, or was Jeannie no, second Jean, one? Jean was, uh, was married uh, before. I don't. I never did know anything about th Their married life never did interest me. <laughs> Well, there's some interesting points about uh, Jeannie Shepard's married life because, to bring up an old pal, Ray Hobbs, she announced her engagement to Hawk on Ray's program. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second time that uh, she was, or maybe the third time that she was married, she announced that on another show that Ray was doing. I remember that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I may have a recording somewhere where Ray is talking to Jeannie Shepard. There was a record that... Uh, that Gene Shepard uh, recorded, Two Little Boys. You remember anything about that? That was uh, the after Hawk, after Hawk was killed. We're going to dig that out and that play. Was, I think I've got that. About her two little boys. They say she almost couldn't make the record. It was the most difficult recording she ever made. So it's a true story. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right. We're visiting with uh, Charlie Peanut Faircloth. If you'd like to ask uh, Peanut a question or make a comment, Good morning, this is WDOD, you're on the air. I want to hear a practice fun song called When I Get Through With You. When I Get Through With You. You rarely ever had a fast song, and that's the only one I'm, that was a hit. When I, I don't know that, do you know that one, Pina? I remember hearing it, yeah. Harlan Howard wrote it, it was a top ten hit for her, mm, right uh, after She's Got You. Hmm, When I Get Through With You. Yeah, I remember that one. It's released on a portrait of Patsy Cline, that album, it was not on her greatest hits album, I don't think. All right. I'll see if I can find it, pal. And I fall to pieces. That's all. Yeah, we're going to play I Fall to Pieces. Okay. Thank you. WDOD. Hey, Al. Yes. This is Teresa Camps. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Good. Could you play a San Antonio Rose by Patsy Klein for me? 
I didn't know you remembered that song. Oh, I love Patsy Cline. <laughs> San Antonio Rose. Yeah, deep within my heart. We will do that. You're going to be up at the Mountain Opry tomorrow night, aren't you? Right, we're going to be there. Good, okay. We'll find San Antonio Rose here in a few minutes. Okay, that, that, thanks a lot. Tracy who? That's uh, Teresa Camp with Just Country. Oh, yeah. The Just Country Band. WDOD, good morning. Hey, all this is Martha. Hi. Uh, I'd like to say hi to Peanut. First time I've heard him since we had that bluegrass festival up in Murphy's, North Carolina. Hello, Martha. Hello, darling. Hello there. How are you today? I feel more like I do now than I did a while ago. Yeah, Peanut, you're going to have to come up to my house again. We'll make coffee. Uh, well, I can't drink coffee anymore. Well, I can't either. They won't let me drink tea. No, no, no caffeine, no nicotine, well, nothing fat, nothing salty. That's the way I am. We'll have to drink that crystal light tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peanut, you take care of it. Okay, Martha. Enjoy hearing you. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Good morning, WDOD. Hey, Peanut. Yes. You knew quite a few of them stars. Jeannie Shepard, I know about five or six, got married at Ringgold down here. Did you, did you ever go down there with any of them? No, no, I never did uh, partake in their personal life. I had too much to take care of my own, I think. <laughs> yeah, she, she married the guy she's married to down there now. Jim Reese got married, or his wife got married down there, and so did the governor of Louisiana. Yeah, governor of Louisiana. He, Jimmy Davis? Jimmy yeah, Davis, sure he married, did. you know who he's married to? He Anna, married Anna, Anna of the, one Chuck, of the Chucks. Chuck yeah. Wagon. Yeah. 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 All right. They married in Ringgold, so... Say, who do you know in Ringgold, Georgia? Most any star that wants to get married. <laughs> WDOD. Hello? Hi. Yes. This is Earl? This is Earl. Hey, uh, I was catching your show coming up from Dalton a while ago. And you're featuring Cowboy Copus. Yes, sir. And another reason why I'm calling you, you got a fellow on there that sounds like Charlie Farquhar. Is that who you got? Uh, you mm -hmm. got him live and in color. Hey, good Lord. I hadn't heard of that sucker in many years. This is Bob Russell. I used to pick and grin a little bit with him. Oh, my goodness. Bob, I was thinking about you the other day. I got a picture of me and Roy Acuff together that I believe you took, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that, that's the greatest night I ever, ever was at the opera. I, I guess Bob was the cause of me uh, being on the Grand Ole Opry. That's the only time I ever performed on the Grand Ole Opry. I was soaking yeah, I wet. Not, well, I tell it and still get tears in my eyes almost. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the greatest nights of my life. The reason, uh, another thing... Earl, is it kosher for me to leave my phone number so you can maybe call me? Well, oh, I'd be glad to. How about call me when the show's over? Okay. That's 899-9336. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, it'll be 3 o'clock now. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, you're playing copious numbers. Do you have waltzing with tears in my eyes? Mm. Let's see. Waltzing with tears Waltzing with sin? <laughs> I guess that's not it, is it? Well, that, would, that would bring tears to your eyes. Yeah. That, that, that was a very emotional song he used to do, and I think it was on one of his... Uh, he made a record on the flip side of something. It wasn't a big record for him, but God, that guy was a singer, if there was one. No, I got Waltzing with sin, but not with tears in my eyes. Hey, Bob, you still live down at Boynton? Well, I've, I'm, I'm in the process of moving. Oh, me? So that's why I want you to call me. I'd like to get together with you. And yeah, would the, what, the rent come due again? Yeah, I'd come due again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pal. We appreciate you calling. You bet. And play something else by Copas there. Anything's good. Filipino, baby. Did you play that one? Mm, did we play that? No, you got to play that one. We'll play P Filipino. Right now we're going to play Breeze. Good, good. I love that. Breeze, Perhaps blow my... You got a good show. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> And there you have Cowboy Copas. Used to play that a lot? Oh, yes, yes. That uh, must have came out in March. <laughs> yeah. And that's a good one for March. That's a good windy song. It sure is. We're uh, remembering today Cowboy Copas, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Patsy Cline. Good morning, WDOD. Hey, Earl. Yeah. It's me again. As you know, I lived in Nashville. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you want to hear something funny about Hawk? Yeah, let's have a good okay. story about Hawk. Uh, let's don't get serious. You know, let's be funny today. Uh, the, everybody was all uh, carried away with the little bitty race cars, you know, the the soapbox type, you know, and they had a little track out, uh, and everyone was, you know, seeing who could get the fastest car. And let's see, who, uh, if I don't remember who all was there. Martin was there, uh, Don Gibson, and Hawk, and Lightning Chance, and, you know, just 
Bunkus of people. Okay, so uh, Hawk built this uh, little old car, and I mean, it was tearing everyone up, you know. It just beat and everything, and he'd get him those old long legs, you know, up under that thing and take off on that track, and someone stood over there after about three weeks of him winning, said, dang, that thing can fly. Someone popped up and said it ought to. He put a single-engine plane motor on that little car. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. Bye. Bye-bye. It oh. had to be had to be twice as long as everybody else's car for him to even get in it. <laughs> How tall was he? About, I think he was six foot seven, something like that. Six foot seven. Gracious. In other words, uh, I could just barely see his chin when I stood by the side. <laughs> WDOD. Uh, hi, Earl. Hi. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I have a question for Peanut. Okay. Back in the 1960s, he made a 45 record. Uh, the name of it was I Know How Lonesome a Lonesome Can Be. Mm-hmm. Can he tell me who that uh, tenor girl singer that was singing with him? Oh, my goodness. I hope he is not listening. Why? Is that, it a he? That's a he. Oh, no. He, do you know Albert Hatfield? Um, Buck Hatfield, we call him. That plays now with the Misfits. I've yeah. heard of him. Yeah. yeah. That, that's Elbert Hatfield. Okay. <laughs> Thank you poor, so poor, much. Poor old Elbert. <laughs> All right. Or Buck, I always called him. Charlie Peanut Faircloth is visiting with me. We're talking about Patsy Klein, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Cowboy Copas, who were killed 24 years ago today in the plane crash.